Good job. Thank you. And Caroline, way back there. Uh, yeah, some of you do business with us, but not nearly enough. So let's get with the program here. Listen, I give a forecast seminar every year about the stock market and about real estate. Uh, and we're, we're one third of the year, or let's say one fourth of the end of the year. But nonetheless, I'll give you uh, some of our forecasts for the remainder of this year. For the last four or five or six years, we have thought real estate prices in Southern California had not yet bottomed. We now think they have. Uh, and that's a real demarcation for us. Um, the reasons are, and you may want to write some of these down, they will help you in talking points with your clients. All of the arrows are going the right way for you. I don't care what the magnitude of the direction is, I just care about the direction. Um, so let me give you some, some feel for that. Home prices last year nationwide and in Southern California were up. I know you see in the press in the last two months they are not up. Uh, you did have one of the grimmest and most difficult winters, both rain in the west and snow in the east. So we think you'll get some lift as the year goes on. But from year over year, prices are up about three to three and a half percent. Uh, one of the things that we always track, and we're an investment firm. We have nothing to do with real estate or mortgages or anything like that. We're strictly an investment firm. And that those of you who are old enough to remember, during the Watergate era, Deep Throat kept telling the Washington Post reporters, follow the money, follow the money, the money will lead you to the truth. Well, the money's Wall Street. And if you were to, and we follow the money, we follow home builder stocks. Home builder stocks in the last year and in the last two years are up. In the last two years, they're up more than the Dow Jones Industrial Averages, and the Dow Jones Industrial Averages had one of the best two-year runs in quite a long time. Uh, more profoundly, REITs, which are R-E-I-T apostrophe S, Real Estate Investment Trust, REITs, are up. Everybody's been talking about the commercial property, etc., is going to get nailed. The stock market is not telling you that. What the stock market is telling you is the banks have rolled over to financing. Their financing is shorter term, usually eight or so years. Uh, they're going to let them work it out. The banks don't want the property. They're choking on property. So they're going to let them work it out. Construction activity, not home building construction, but other construction activity, roads, etc., etc., are up. Now, home building activity is down, which means that the shadow inventory that you've been warned about as though it's some coming tsunami probably isn't going to happen. Here are the numbers, and you want to tell these numbers to some clients. Typically in the United States, we build about 75,000 new homes a month. That's 900,000 a year. During the bubble, we were building about 135,000 new homes a month, almost double. We are now building fewer than 25,000 new homes a month. That inventory is getting sucked up. So this big shadow inventory, et cetera, et cetera, probably boys and girls probably ain't going to happen. I mean, that inventory is being sucked up and the excesses are, are, are beginning to get sucked up. Now, that doesn't mean the process is over, but you're seeing that you have been warned about this shadow inventory for some time. It's probably not real realistic for people to be that concerned about it. Office uh, space utilization is up. Uh, one of the things that's very telling you know, there's always this adage in the stock market, the fall of the smart money. <clears throat> so if Warren Buffett were to call me and tell me he's going to buy some stock on tomorrow morning, I'd want to buy that same stock, right? I would assume he did his homework. He's a smart guy. I'm going to follow the smart money. Does that make sense? Yes, Say yeah. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Neil taught me to tell you what to do here. <laughs> I'm supposed to tell you to say yeah. Okay. Let me just tell you one of the big signs that real estate prices probably have bought them. There are a lot of cash deals out there. Cash deals are at a very, very high volume. The ca anybody who could pay cash is, quote, the smart money. In other words, they have enough money. They must be fairly smart about money. That, that is an early, early buying signal whenever you have that much cash activity. Uh, so I think that you have a lot of signs that say real estate prices are likely to begin to lift. One of the other things that's very interesting is mortgage rates probably, who here thinks mortgage rates are likely to go higher over the next one to three years? You have to raise your hand here. We don't have time for, uh, uh, who thinks, raise your hand. Who thinks mortgage rates will be higher in the next one to three years? Who thinks they'll be about the same? Anyone? 
Who thinks they'll be lower? Okay, these two guys are wrong, uh, so you write them off. The reason is, is real estate uh, mortgages and general interest rates are too low right now. Uh, the Fed has told you in no uncertain terms they're keeping them artificially low in order for the economy to get some traction. Once it gets traction, rates will start to rise. We're beginning to get traction. Even unemployment is beginning to decline some, etc. So we're starting to see the early, the early uh, sprouts of traction. So interest rates are likely to go up. Now, here's the deal. That is your friend. When interest rates are going up, you will get more sales activity. Contrary, it's counter to it. Contrary to what the press tells you. Uh, do you. Do you buy that? Does anybody buy that? Here's why. Everybody thinks, well, if interest rates go down, that's good for real estate. What have interest rates been doing in the last five years? Going down. What's real estate been doing in the last five years? Suffering. Yeah. What, whenever real estate prices were doing really well, interest rates were going up. So here's the deal. When rates go down, John says to Mary, sweetheart, let's wait. We don't have to be buying a house. We can procrastinate because it'll get cheaper. <laughs> when rates bonds up, any of you who are married will appreciate this, but Mary says to John, sweetheart, you're an idiot. Let's buy the house. So the fact is, is it stimulates activity. The ideal for you is like this, up, down, up, down, with new highs each time, where you drive them crazy. If they didn't buy uh, here, they'll buy here. If they didn't buy there, bring them back down, they'll buy there. So what I'm saying to you is rising rates are actually your friend. Everybody in the press, etc., for the rest of your life will tell you rising rates hurts real estate sales. That's never been true. Just look at the data. The data is rates start to tick up. You should be on your Rolodex or on your whatever and call everybody you know who procrastinated. They should stop procrastinating because they are likely to move up. And don't tell them they'll move up. Ask them, do you think they'll move up? If they say, yeah, you have a conversation point. But let them tell you. Don't be all preachy. Let them tell you. Um, one of the things that I think that you guys probably aren't very good at, if you're like most real estate agents, is you don't, you know, people vote for their president over tax issues, for the governor over tax issues, for your senator, for your congressperson over tax issues. One of the things that I think you don't really talk enough about is, boys and girls, you are the keeper of the biggest tax deduction anyone will ever have. And I don't think you make that point enough. We're the keeper of the second biggest tax deduction, retirement accounts, etc. But you are the keeper of the biggest tax deduction they could get. So the fact of the matter is, is you need to tell them that. I don't expect you to give them tax advice, but I think you can say, we are the keeper of the biggest tax deduction they will ever have, which is their mortgage deduction, yes? <coughs> um, <clears throat> Is anybody here concerned that uh, there's been some chatter that they may take the deduction away? Yeah. Do you, who said yeah? I do. Uh, who, do you hear that from clients at all? No. You do? Okay, it's noise. Now here's the deal. If, here's what you have to ask a client who brings that up. First of all, if they really believe that, they have to hurry up and sign the papers. If that, because Every tax law in American history has been grandfathered. In other words, if they already have a deal, their deduction won't be taken away. It'll only be taken away for new money, for new deals. So if they really believe that, they need to hurry up and do the deal. If they don't believe it, they need to stop talking about it and get back to the brick, mortar, and dirt of this place and see if they want to buy the damn thing. But the fact is, either they believe and they need to hurry up, or they don't believe and you should just table and stop talking about it because it's a waste of energy and it's a distraction. Does that make sense to you? Yes. I think you just need to focus them with some discipline. If you really believe that, hurry up because every tax law has been grandfathered in American history up to now. So if they really believe it, they should sign the deal. If they really don't believe it, you should stop talking about it. Let's talk about the house again. Does that make sense to you? Okay. Um, <coughs> who here thinks that over the next three or so years we will have a significant increase in inflation? Raise your hand. Who here thinks we will not? He's probably right. 
So you, you, come on up here. You're alone. I'm teasing. <laughs> Nonetheless, your clients think we'll have significant inflation. And that is a good thing for you. I would, I would really play to that. I don't happen to share that point of view, by the way. But, but, you know, my business gives you a lot of humility. I don't have a crystal ball. So the fact of the matter is, if your client thinks, due to government spending or whatever, we're going to have significant inflation, what, what are the inevitable byproducts of inflation? The inevitable byproducts of inflation are twofold. Interest rates will go up, that's an axiom, period, without exception. And tangibles, brick, mortar, and dirt will go up in price, that's a given, it's a slam dunk. So if they really believe we're likely to have inflation, again, it should light a fire under them, they need to get with the program. Does that make sense to you? So what I'm trying to talk to you about is talk about some of these economic uh, beliefs that they have and feed into it. They are motivators as to why to get moving. If you're going to buy a house, buy the thing. If you're not going to buy a house, let's stop the conversation. Let's all go home. But the fact is, when people are out looking for a house, honestly, they're trying to buy it. And I think a lot of times the real estate agent talks them out of it with a lot of noise and, and superfluous and irrelevant information. Uh, they, they did not wake up Saturday morning going out looking for houses just to torture you. They really didn't. <laughs> They really are trying to buy a house, and I think oftentimes you folks talk them out of it. I really think that's true. So there are a couple things that I would do. do you, you do a lot of open houses, do you? Yes, no? No, not so much? Do you do much door knocking? Yes. yes. Okay, door knocking. It's got to be one of the most awkward things you can do. Is that true? And I, I, who laughed at that? Were you laughing at me or with me? Huh? Is it awkward or not? It is, okay. And I know you do scripts. I sat here, I, I was here one day when Neil was doing scripts with you, and I got to believe they help, right? I'm going to give you a script that I like. St stop doing scripts. Get a survey going. We have a survey, and if, if Neil is so interested, uh, is, is interested in such a thing, I'll, I'll get it off to him. But it's very colorful. And it asks questions. And what I would do if I were you, and I'd do this for an open house, too. Uh, I'd have it on the counter. Because my vision of an open house is people come in, they try desperately not to make eye contact with you, they try and hurry up like they're invisible and get out. Right? They try and they do everything they can to look at the house without engaging you. And of course, anybody in sales, your strength, your success, your power is your ability to communicate information. And if they don't give you a chance to communicate with them, you know, you're kind of neutered, right? So the surveys are designed to try and instigate communication. And, and on it, I would ask questions. You could change the questions for your own liking. But I would ask things like, first of all, I would say to somebody I door knock, listen, we're taking a survey, and I'll give you a prize if you'll answer it. And if your spouse, your husband or wife or whatever is here, if they answer, I'll give you two prizes. What I'd do is I'd give them a $1 lottery ticket. And if they win, I'd kill myself. Uh, <laughs> or wouldn't you? And here's what every realtor says. Well, if they win, they have to buy a house for me. Are you, kill yourself. I mean, they got $53 million. Buying a house isn't going to help you enough. I'd never forgive myself. But you can't go to the Kmart or whatever and buy like 20 tickets because they'll give you it on one sheet. So you got to drive them crazy, which means you have to go to a new Kmart or 7-Eleven every week. But you want to give them, have them give you 20 $1 tickets. Okay. And I would say, if you'll fill out this survey, and the survey should have questions like, do you think real estate prices in your neighborhood will be higher or lower the same 10 years from now? They're going to say higher. Do you think mortgage rates will be higher or lower the same three years from now? They're going to say higher. Do you think that um, uh, ba -ba 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 -ba, tax deduction will be gone or not? So just questions to engage them and give them a lottery ticket. I think you will have an opportunity to start communicating about, do you know any houses on your street or in your neighborhood or whatever? So it's something that is more fun and perhaps less awkward because you're offering a fun, everybody likes to take a test. And those of you who are married or involved in uh, you know, a significant other or whatever, don't you love to take, a, my wife's magazines, these women magazines, they always have these compatibility tests, right? <laughs> and everybody takes them. Is that right? So if you give them a $1 lottery ticket, who's going to say no? They might win. So I think you have an opportunity to engage people, uh, and, and it might help you a lot. And I would try and take advantage of that. Okay, 
We think real estate prices are likely to lift in Southern California. Now, there are going to be pockets where this isn't true, where they're overbuilt and so on. I, I understand that. But overall, I don't know your marketing area per se. You would all know that better than I. However, overall in Southern California, we think real estate prices will increase this year uh, 5 to 7.5%. Now, how much are prices in your general marketing area? What, what are prices around here? Give me a number. Average. 500. Okay, 500 is what I was hoping for, so okay, that's good. <laughs> and let's just look at that. If they have a $500,000 house, you've got to stop telling people this house costs $500,000. I don't know what's the matter with you people. You, no wonder you have a hard time selling things. You lie like crazy to these people. You know that, right? <laughs> this house doesn't cost $500,000. You're putting at most 20% down. So it's a hundred grand that they're paying. Yeah? So you got to tell them, would you like to buy this house for $100,000? Because that's what they're going to buy it for. The rest is rent. They got to pay rent somewhere if they don't buy this place, yeah? I mean, it's not like they're going to live for free someplace. So if you finance a $400,000 house, who here is in the mortgage business? Was that you? How much does it cost? Payment-wise? Yeah. Uh, it's probably about $3,000. Well, oh, about twenty. dollars The rates today, maybe about $2,800 a month. How much? Two eight. About $2,800. 2800 Okay. He doesn't know what he's talking about. Never listen to this person again. <laughs> not ever. Ever, ever. <laughs> Here, here's why. It is deductible. Anybody who could qualify for a $500,000 house has to be in a 40% tax bracket, state and federal. They're going to be in a 28 to 34% federal. They're going to be in a 6 to 11% state. So they're only paying 60% of this, maybe even 65. But what is that going to be? What, what is that? That's uh, 8, uh, let's say 12. Uh, that's about $1,680. So call it $1,800 a month after tax deduction. How much does it cost to rent a $500,000 house in this area? I have no idea. How much? Okay. More than $1,800. Yeah? Okay, so they can buy the place for hundred grand. What a deal. What a deal. If they walk in, how much does it cost? $100,000. Tell them that. <laughs> they'll start talking to you. What? <laughs> I mean, that's what you want. You want to talk to them, don't you? Stop telling them it costs five hundred. It doesn't. It costs a hundred grand plus rent. They got to pay rent somewhere, but here the rent's deductible. Now they have a hundred thousand dollars. If the price of the house goes up five percent, what's five percent of five hundred thousand? That's a twenty-five percent profit on their investment. Yes? Now, what if I'm wrong? What if prices only go up 2.5%? They made a 12.5% 12, 12 profit on their investment tax-free. They got to live in a place they want. The only reason they're looking is they don't like where they live now, for whatever reason. Yeah? So they get, they get to buy a significant asset that can generate terrific tax-free profit for very little money down compared to the value of the asset, and they get a deduction. How can you not just sell that all day long? Stop talking about that's a bedroom, that's a bathroom. Honest to God, they know that. <laughs> they know what these things look like by now. So you've got to start talking a little bit about the merit investment-wise, because that's what the press is killing you on. They're, you're, you know, they're, they're, telling, they're telling you that you, know, you don't want to make a financial mistake. Now, in the past, Five, six years, I guess we've been coming here maybe four or five, I think, something like that. Uh, we have said we don't think prices have bottomed. We now think they have, and let's hope we're right. But it's not a question we think so. We believe that the money talks if you know how to listen, and the money is the stock market, the home builder stocks, the REITs. Uh, they're, they're chattering that it looks like prices probably have bottomed. <laughs> Now that doesn't mean you're going to have a rocket takeoff. It doesn't mean that at all. It means that it's a process, not an event. You don't get the price doubling up by morning. But I think you will see a rise in price. Okay, so here's something else I want you to write down. First of all, let me take a survey. I like surveys. It engages people. You should be asking your prospects and clients, etc., these questions. Who here <clears throat> thinks the value of property in the marketing area will be higher or lower the same 10 years from now. Who thinks higher? You have to raise your hand if you think, you have to vote. You guys, otherwise, Siberia for you. Who, think, who thinks higher? Raise your hand. 
Okay, who thinks about the same? Who thinks lower? Okay, the people who think about the same are wrong. Here's why. So just go kill yourself now. You're wrong. <laughs> Here's why. Does anybody here know anyone who bought property in Southern California and owned it for 10 years or longer or didn't make money? Anybody? The answer is no. Even if you had bought property five years ago, they haven't made any money. I understand that. And I think those who bought property five years ago may be the first group that after 10 years of holding may not have made any money because it was a severe decline. However, here's what you want to write down. Anybody who bought property in Southern California after a price collapse in any 10-year period, they simply flat out cleaned up. You just had a price collapse. So you are likely to be doing them an inordinate favor that they will thank you for. Anybody who bought property in Southern California after a price collapse, they cleaned up. So you are after a price collapse. You are post Almageddon for real estate. So the fact of the matter is, is you will have done them quite a favor. Does that make sense to you? So I think these two are wrong, and let's hope that they're wrong, and they hope they're wrong, because you just had a price collapse. Now, the $500,000 house, those of you who voted thought it would be higher 10 years from now, give me, throw out some numbers. What, what do you think it'll be 10 years from now, price-wise? 600. <clears throat> How much? 650. 650. I feel like an auctioneer. Do I hear seven? <laughs> huh? Do I hear seven? seven? 750. Okay, let me use 750 for a second. If it goes to 750, first of all, one of the things that's interesting, you people definitely need Prozac. You're all depressed. How much was this house five years ago? It was 750. So you're just saying it may get back to where it was, and I'm telling you that in a 10-year period of time, that's probably a fairly modest number based on history, and history is a powerful, powerful teacher. So history matters. But if it goes from 500000 to seven fifty, what's the percentage increase? This isn't a hard question. 50%. 50%. It is a hard question. I lie. That, that's wrong. If it goes from 500 to seven fifty. You only have 100,000 in it, that's 250% on your actual investment. You only put 100 grand or less in it. So it's an inordinate profit, tax free. The rest is rent. You just got to get over to you're selling a $500,000 house for 500,000. You're not. You're giving it away for 100 grand. And I don't think you guys talk about that to get their, grab their attention. They know that's true. You want to grab their attention with things that are true. They know that's true. You people tell them it's 500000 You tell them that the interest rate is 5%. When it's 5% before tax, it's a lot less than that after tax. I mean, no wonder you have a hard time. You're not telling them the truth. You're lying through your teeth. <laughs> right? Okay. What questions do you have real quick? You got all this, I give out the test, you're going to ace it? I'm so impressed. Huh? Okay, um, how much time do I still have? No, five minutes? Yes. Can we talk about me? <laughs> Is that all right? If you don't have any questions, I'm, I'm ready to move on here. Okay, we would like your retirement accounts. We specialize, uh, and, 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 and your other money too, but for pretty much most of our clients, a lot of times we have their retirement accounts. We've navigated through this decade, which was a very grim decade for investing, very successfully. Here's a chart of our actual performance in that time frame. The red here is the uh, Vanguard 500 Mutual Fund, which is the largest mutual fund in the world. And we compared it to that because it has the lowest fee. So it's the Vanguard 500 Mutual Fund has outperformed most other investments. It's probably outperformed the investments you have or you'd be famous. And unless you're famous, it's probably outperforming you. So if you had a million dollars in January of 2000, what would you have had January 1st of this year? Market went down, down, down. We have invested mostly in indexed annuities, which are annuities invested in the stock market index using the standard poor 500. We stay flat, flat, and flat because 
uh, an index annuity is guaranteed against the decline. If the market goes down, you stay even, you don't go down. Then when the market went up, 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 up and up, we went up, up, up and with it. So you got your million dollars went down to 599, back up to 999, you almost got even. We're at a million 381. Then the market plunged two years ago to 614, 615. We stayed at a million 381. The last two years, you've had a nice lift and a rally. You got back up to uh, 856. You're not even yet. We're at a million 640. We beat your brains in. So we would like to talk to you about your own accounts. We feel we could probably do a better job than has been done up to here. Um, so that, that's the only reason we come out here. I'm sure you're lovely people, but I'd rather have bagels with my wife. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, Carol, anytime anybody in our business gives a talk, uh, public talk, we must have record of attendees. It's a compliance issue. I know Neil wants the floor back again, so I'm going to leave you, but I do need to hand out these cards. If you fill me in, I need a date, where you attend, a name, address, etc. And if you want an appointment check, yes. If you don't want an appointment check, no. Thank you very much. All right, good.